Best Food Taste Talk demonstration for 2021 with Sruthi Swaminathan. And today she is going to be making um, roasted cauliflower tacos with a chipotle maple dressing. Now, one, I said, this is perfect for today because it's Tuesday. So happy Taco Tuesday, everyone. And I think I'm going to, um, well, before I turn it over, just want to introduce myself again. I'm Christine Duke. I'm the Continuing Education Program Manager at Kendall College at National Lewis University. And very happy to have you all with us this afternoon and very excited to um, learn a little bit more about this dish. And I know all the flavors that Sruthi always puts together is are so, so bountiful and so exciting. So I'm very excited for Sruthi to take it away. Did I mute you accidentally? Yeah, you're, can you unmute yourself, Sruthi? Thank you. Hello. Hi. Hi, guys. <laughs> Thanks everyone for coming. I'm always amazed when people have like the virtual backgrounds on. I tried that for one call today, like for one of my work calls and it was a disaster. Like it was like part of my hair was being morphed into a palm tree that I had set up like in my background. But you guys make it look so easy. I know I've, I've had some issues with the backgrounds myself too, so. Oh, okay, well, all right. Well, thanks everyone for coming. Um, I'm super excited to make this. Christine emailed me earlier in the year, um, earlier in the year, like a week ago. <laughs> Who am I? Um, to be like, oh, what kind of things should we make? So I sent her some stuff and she was like, what about these tacos for Taco Tuesday? So after I sent her the list, um, a little pitch, I guess, for future things I'm going to be doing, I realized just by accident that I ended up having things from different cuisines. Like I had something Mexican, I had something Indian, I had some fusion, I had... Um, something American, I had like a mix of things. So a bunch of different stuff coming up, some of which, um, spoiler, I've never made before. So I'm gonna be make, like people like practice things before they teach it. I'm just like, let's try this. And I'm like, what the heck? You guys can't taste it any of this. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Don't walk I'm, us down the wrong path. Or yeah, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. It will taste too good. Okay, so today we're gonna be making some roasted cauliflower tacos like like Christine said, and um, I heard recently from someone, um, I was like, oh, I'm gonna make these cauliflower tacos. And they were like, yeah, you know, it makes sense because, you know, cauliflower mm -hmm. is really having a moment. And I was like, I'm not making this because cauliflower is having a moment. What does that even mean? Like I'm making cauliflower because I make cauliflower all the time, um, usually roasted. And I love making it that way because it takes so little time to put together. So I'm gonna show you a little bit of what I have prepped, and then we're gonna go ahead and make them. This should be a pretty straightforward thing that we're going through. So let us, I can't see Christine. Oh, there you are. Okay, so <laughs> let's get started. Um, first thing I'm gonna, I have here is I have these cauliflower florets. This little story about the cauliflower. Um, I don't know how many of you have been doing like grocery delivery instead of going to the grocery store for like safety reasons during this time, which has been super, super convenient for me and I've loved it. And I've had a great experience with it. It's just this time I ordered cauliflower a couple of weeks ago or last week and they brought me a cauliflower that had like this much floret and this much leaf. Is that what it's called? Like the outside green stuff. So I could barely use it. So I got like a giant cauliflower to use for today's thing. Um, I've also cut them up into florets. Something different about the way I've cut them up this time is usually what I do is I kind of place it floret side up and I just kind of go to town. I just like cut it in quarters and just cut it all over. And what ends up happening is the cauliflower like crumbles a lot. So you end up with a lot of really small pieces, which specifically when you're roasting them in high heat, like we're gonna be doing it at like around 400, 425, they end up burning. Now, some people like that extra crispy, like slightly burnt flavor in the cauliflower, but if you have too many little pieces, it kind of ruins the dish. So I found this video on how to cut cauliflower. And I guess you're supposed to put the florid side down, cut around with like a paring knife around the base or around the stem. Um, and then it comes out. That's supposed to come out. Mine, it like took some finagling, 
But then when you do that, you just end up with florets that look like this. Like, can you believe that? So anyway, I have these florets here. I actually have quite a bit of them. Um, and then I'm gonna show you all of the stuff that I have that we're gonna add to it. So first thing we're gonna do is we're going to season up this cauliflower. I've cut it up and I've washed it. That's all I've done. So first thing I'm gonna do is add some, um, actually I'm gonna add this olive oil. I like to have two extra virgin olive oils. One that's more, um, more of a standard one that I use for cooking and for roasting. Um, and then I have another one that has a little more flavor either. Sometimes I'll get a more lemony one, sometimes a peppery one. This one's a little bit more um, fruity tasting, which we'll add, add for the dressing later on. Okay, so here's some olive oil. You get this giant thing at Costco, can't go wrong. It's excellent olive oil, highly recommend it. Um, so I'm just gonna pour a little bit in here. It's probably a couple of tablespoons of it, maybe a little more. Um, and then for the seasonings, what I have here um, is I have some smoked Spanish paprika. So I have used regular paprika before. For some reason for me, um, regular paprika has a little more sharp taste while the smoked version, yes, it smells smoked, but I like the kind of um, depth that it has. I feel like the flavor kind of drags on, if that makes sense <laughs> from a taste perspective. Um, so I have the Spanish smoked paprika. I also have a little bit of cumin um, and I have some onion powder. And I've recently been adding onion powder to a lot of things because it's really, really adds a lot of flavor. So all I'm gonna do is add this into here. Um, the olive oil is already in there and now we're just gonna mix this up. So let me try to do this without, you guys see that? Mm -hmm. See that bowl? Okay. Um, now, if I wasn't on camera, maybe I'd just like use my hands to do this, but <laughs> I always use something like this to mix all my stuff. Um, and then it doesn't work. So guys, I'm gonna use my hands. They're very clean, trust me. We trust you. All right, great. Um, I'm just kind of tossing it. One thing I like to make sure is that the cauliflower is not too watery after I wash it. Uh, because then the spices tend to not stick to it. And then when I actually roast it, the flavor isn't quite as, um, uh, as intense as I like. All right, and as I'm doing this, I'm realizing that this might need a little bit more spice, probably because of things like this, this giant head of cauliflower, giant floret that I just found in here. So if you find something really big like that, just cut it up. Isn't that so satisfying? Look at that. I like added spices and then I cut it and it's like perfectly creamy in there. Nice. Okay. So adding all this, I'm going to add a little bit, oops, add a little bit more oil. And then I am going to add a little bit more seasoning because it looks like for the size, um, for the size that I got, it could use a little bit more. So let me just grab a little more paprika. Then you'd be surprised. I mean, it looks, sometimes it looks like it's a lot of seasoning, but especially with the cauliflower as it cooks and it just kind of shrinks down, having that flavor concentrated in there is, is delicious. I, I hate kind of biting into cauliflower and having it taste bland on the inside. That's, that, that's just, that's just the worst. Okay, a little more cumin, same things I added before. See, I'm really glad that these spice things have like a small one and then the big one. I'm always using a <laughs> big one for a lot of the spices. And then Bring a little spice. What was that? Bring all the spice. Yeah. And then a little more onion powder. And that's about it for the cauliflower. So, and again, keep in mind, I mentioned this in, um, in, you know, a lot of my, in a lot of my videos, a lot of my classes that you never have to feel limited by the spices that you have in your cabinet. You don't have to feel limited by, you know, oh man, I ran out of this. If you don't have these exact spices and you have, I don't know, coriander powder, if you have um, dried Italian herbs, or that might go a little bit better with a different sauce, as you'll see, um, go ahead and do that. Just experiment with different combinations and then figure out what you and your family like best and um, kind of go off of that. Another thing I'll say is uh, the reason, another reason I decided to use 
the um, Spanish smoked paprika here is because the sauce we're gonna have, um, as Christine mentioned, it's gonna be a chipotle honey sauce. And the chipotle, the chipotle yeah. peppers, chipotle yeah. peppers. Sorry, okay. Sorry, one second. Sorry. Okay. Okay, go right ahead. Sorry. Okay. Um, is the chipotle peppers in adobo sauce also have that kind of smoky flavor? And I mentioned this before, where I like adding flavors to the dish in different ways, like similar flavors in different ways. So in this case, move this up. We have that um, smokiness and a little bit of that spiciness from the chipotle peppers, but then we're also gonna get that from the paprika. So it makes it feel like there's something different there that you can't quite tell what it is. And that's what it is. This is just added it, added the components in two different ways. Okay, so okay, now- someone, someone also asked, did you also add salt to that? To your cauliflower? Nope. <laughs> just didn't do that, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> like gonna get ready to put it in the tray. Thank you. <laughs> said that. Um, yes, of course we had salt and pepper. I think Christine, you have the recipe, right? That's my yeah, proof. I said, that I... If, if anyone did not uh, receive the recipe, just send me your email down in the chat and I will make sure and get it out to you. It was on the email that went out this morning. If you received that, you can find it at the bottom of that email. Yeah, I'm also adding a little bit of pepper. Okay. And then I am going to put this on, I've already lined two uh, baking trays. We ran out of foil. So we have one with foil, one with parchment. And I know this is gonna cause some differences in how it cooks because of how each of these materials like conducts heat and all, but I just ran out of foil, but I still had to make tacos. So here we are. Um, okay. Tossing. I always see people on TV just like going like this and making it look super easy. I'm really glad I wore the shirt today where you cannot tell if I have like yellow stains on there. It's just was like the color story is like just that. Blend um, right in. Yeah. What? It would just blend right in if you had. Yeah, it just blend it. I know because this is really high concentration of that. So yeah, I still have to master kind of how to do this, but again, tossing everything with the salt. And then I'm gonna spread it out. You can see some of these pieces are actually quite big, which is okay. You might've noticed I was like cutting some in between um, because they were way too big. But once these cook up, they are going to be um, nice and kind of uh, a little bit shrunken almost because the water is gonna come out of them. And that's the other reason that with cauliflower, um, with cauliflower that I always cook at a pretty high heat, like at 400 or above, because there's, I feel like a lot of water tends to come out of it when I put it in the oven. And if I cook it at a lower heat, then that water is taking a little bit longer to evaporate. And so this cauliflower is taking longer to crisp up because it's a little soggier. Does that make sense? Like there's just more water. So it's like steaming a little bit um, versus that. Okay. Would it, might you add turmeric or would that dominate the flavor? Yeah, so I've added turmeric to a version of this in the past where I added, um, I'm just looking at my spices here. I think I added like a bunch of Indian masalas where I added like chana masala, cumin, coriander, a little bit of turmeric. The reason I'm not adding it here is because the smoked paprika already has a pretty strong flavor and the sauce that we're making also has the chipotle peppers and adobo sauce. Um, which is going to be tempered a little bit by the lemon juice and the honey, as you'll see, but I didn't want to add something that would um, overpower in the cauliflower and then have an overpowering sauce, if that makes sense. But yeah, you can definitely add turmeric in like a different, um, in a different configuration. I just find with the paprika, it's a little bit much. Okay, um, and again, as always, don't crowd the pans. Um, another recipe for it not crisping up and just kind of steaming. Okay. I'm gonna put this in the oven. You usually like to put these in, um, usually like to put these in for about 30 to 35 minutes. Um, and then I'll rotate it once in between. Uh, it kind of depends on your oven. 
And, you know, with these ovens, if you set it to 400 and you open the door once, like who knows how that's changing. Um, you don't know if it's actually 400 at like the back of the oven or the front of the oven. So one thing I've been doing recently is kind of midway through, if I have two trays, like moving which one's on top, which one's on the bottom, and then also rotating the trays so that everything gets cooked evenly. Another thing you could do is just take it out, toss the whole thing, and then, you know, switch the trays if you like. Um, but that's just how I do it. Okay, so while that's cooking, um, I am going to, I'm gonna make the sauce and show you kind of how we'll put the tacos together. All right, let me move this. Oops, found a stray cauliflower. Okay. So for the sauce, that light is out. We have a bunch of things here. This inside, can you guys see? Can you see that? Yes. Okay, awesome. So, um, the sauce is a chipotle honey sauce. So what I have here are um, about four medium-ish chipotle peppers. And if you wanna know like where you can get these, they're pretty readily available now. I feel like I first heard about them through Bobby Flay on Food Network and I'm like, where do you get that stuff? But you can find it at any grocery store really. That's what I used. Um, so they come in a can like this and it just says chiles, um, chipotles and then it says in a in an adobo sauce right there so I took about four of them chopped them up really small and then took a little bit of the sauce from the can and that's in here as well so having this alone as the sauce is going to be a lot um, would not recommend but what we're going to add to it is some honey and Christine you mentioned earlier that it was chipotle maple I'm sure chipotle maple would also be delicious I have no doubt. Um, okay, and then I'm also gonna add the juice of, I have half a lemon here. I might taste it and see if it needs a little more, but I'm gonna start off with half a lemon. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of salt to it. So that's gonna be our sauce. So let me go ahead and add these things in. You know, one thing you could do if you really wanted is um, put all of these in like a food processor and get a really, really creamy sauce. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not gonna do that today. I mean, I could, but um, I have made it that way before, but you can also do it this way where you just end up with a little bit of the chunks of the chilies. If you don't like that, or if that's gonna be too intense for you, go ahead and just puree it. And you can adjust, you know, how many of these chilies you put in based on your heat tolerance and also how much you like the flavor. All right, and next we're going to put in some honey. I know this looks like a lot, but keep in mind this sauce is going to last like several, several, several tacos. Um, and then last, or a couple last bits, we're going to add a little bit of salt to this. And learning to season as I go. I guess except when I forget to season completely, as someone just saved me from. Um, for my cauliflower. And then last bit is a little bit of lemon. And you know what, I was, um, gosh, what book was it? Um, I don't know if you guys have read like Salt, Fat, Acid, Heat by Samin Nasrat. It's all about like use, how to use those components, salt, fat, acid, and heat to um, elevate your cooking. I don't remember, I think it was in there. She has a wheel of, it's called a wheel of flavor. Mm -hmm. And she talks about like different ingredients um, and how they go well together, but also different cuisines. So she makes the distinction even between like lemon and lime, for example. Uh -huh. So Mexican food, lime is really great. Um, I don't know how to describe it. Maybe it's just a little sharper or a little, um, it's a little more tart or a little more sharp. I'm not sure exactly how to describe it, but she says, you know, if you're using for a lot of um, uh, Thai or Mexican cuisines, lime seems to go a little bit better than lemon. Um, but in certain other cuisines, lemon goes better. And here I'm using lemon because I don't have lime, but I would love to, um, 
I have made it with that too. I wish I could do like a side by side. Okay, so here's the sauce, guys. Super simple. Very easy. Um, yeah, really easy. And again, if you want it like nice and creamy and smooth, oh, oops. Um, just put it in a food processor. Heck, you could even, if you were making a large enough volume of this sauce, you could even put it, use like an immersion blender. But you'd be, mm -hmm. have to be using quite a bit. I don't want to use it on this, but um, yeah. So super easy. And you can see like the seeds from um, the peppers and stuff right in there. And I love that. Like that just makes me want to eat it. I'm going to give it a little, um, I'm going to give it a little taste. Okay. Okay, guys, I'm not even lying. It's delicious. <laughs> I'm not lying. I have to, Christine, you may have a little jar of sauce coming your Ooh, way. I love when I get weekend. little deliveries. <laughs> yeah, so you can like try it out and then, you know, give your honest feedback. And yeah, then be like, absolutely. no, this might have been better with lime. So, oh, we have a request to see the uh, can of, of chilies again. Yeah, here you go. This is one brand. I There's a couple different brands that, um, that make it, but you can find it anywhere. I know I used to look for this. I didn't even know that this was a thing that was canned. Like I used to look for it in the fresh section. I used to look for it in frozen. And then one day I just, I just asked someone and they were like this. So yeah. that's it. <laughs> the sauce is incredible. I'm not gonna lie. Now let's put together our tacos. Um, I wish I could do like TV time and just, you know, magically like have it. But I have a little toaster oven, which I got, um, after many years, I don't know if I mentioned this before, my mom's always told me to like get a toaster oven. I was like, that's useless. Why would I get that? And then now that I have it, yeah. I use it all the time, like to just quickly roast a head of garlic or, you know, I mean, who am I kidding? Like reheat pizza and fried chicken, you know, that that's, that's just what I use for. Okay, let me grab the um, cauliflower that's already done and then let's assemble these tacos. And I did add salt to the other cauliflower. Let me just adjust the, uh... oh, I can't see. Oh, okay, there you are. All right. <laughs> okay. And now I'm going to grab the cauliflower. Oh man. Okay, it looks like that. Lovely. Smells good. A plus. Okay. Um, and you can see they like shrunk a little bit. These pieces were uh, a little bit smaller than the other one because this is the cauliflower that looked um like a like a rose or something that size-wise is really, really small. <laughs> um this is the whole cauliflower. So just if, if they were cooking for one, they'd be able to pos potentially do this like just in their toaster oven too, huh? Instead yeah. of eating up the whole little thing. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. So you could just put it in here. And all I did is on my toaster oven, there's a little like ticker that goes like, mm -hmm. well, that's how tickers are. But like it goes, you can set it for 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes. And I just set it at 400 in there for that. Um, okay. So we have these. Next, let me move all this so I can show you guys how to assemble, assemble these. I'm gonna point this down. Okay, you can see that? Yes. Cool. Okay, so here, I have some tortillas right here that I lightly warmed up beforehand. The way I warm these up is, I know you could put them like on a little skillet and do it. I just take um, kind of a lightly damp paper towel, um, place a couple tortillas in between, and then microwave it for like 20 seconds. Then it comes out really warm, but then you have to eat it kind of soon or it gets hard again. Mm -hmm. So um, that's what happens. Okay, so here's this. We are going to start with some of the cauliflower. Actually, I forgot to take one thing out. Hang on just a second. All right, 
I knew I was forgetting something. I was just having lovely conversation with Christine before it started. I'm like, completely forgot. Okay, so what I'm adding in here, guys, is some um, baby arugula as some greens in there. So like I mentioned before, um, uh, there's some pretty strong flavors in here with the sauce and then also with the seasonings in the cauliflower. So I wanna try to balance that out as much as possible both with an element of freshness to balance out some of the richness that comes from the cauliflower once it's roasted and some of the cheese we're going to add and then also for some texture variation because this is going to be a little crunchy and it looks nice okay so we have this these are already like pre-washed um this is baby arugula we're just going to put a few pieces in there like that we are then going to take some of the cauliflower. Let me grab this. <laughs> um, okay, this, I'm not kidding. This, this actually smells very good. Oops. No, I love all the spices that you put on there. Mm -hmm. I can tell um, it's, it's going to be very flavorful. Yeah. And I, I have a tendency to like overstuff tacos. Like, do you guys do that? Like when you're making dumplings or when you're making tacos, you just try to fit as much in there as possible. I am seriously guilty of that. I will always overstuff my taco and everything falls oh. out. I, I would know. like, I would never consider tacos um, a walk and eat it kind of food because I, no, you I can't. cannot do that. Not no, at all. I can't do that. It, there's no, there's no fun in that. Okay, let me move this. I'm going to show you here. Um, also, one thing, Christine, I just realized that I put in the recipe is for the sauce. And I mentioned at the beginning, I'll usually add some olive oil too. But I should also mention, I, I usually taste it after I add everything else. And sometimes I add the olive oil, sometimes I don't. It kind of depends on like, and since I'm not too big on measuring really precisely, I wish I could, I have approximate amounts that have worked for me in the recipe, but sometimes it just doesn't meet the oil because there's enough from, enough of kind of robustness from the remaining things that it doesn't need the oil. So I didn't add the oil this time, feel free to skip it or you can add it and see what happens. All right, cauliflower, arugula. Next thing we're gonna put in there is some red onion. Mm -hmm. This is just raw. But another way I've done this is I've done like a quick pickle. Have you guys tried that? Like where you just yeah. quickly put in some um, vinegar, like apple cider vinegar or normal, normal like no, red vinegar. vinegar. <laughs> Why? <laughs> but like a, an apple cider vinegar, or if they if they have a champagne, or something like a really lighter vinegar would be one. Yeah, you could you could put it with like red wine vinegar, or you could put it in apple cider vinegar. You could put it in white vinegar. Um, this for like 20 minutes and what it does is it takes that extreme pungency out of the onions and softens them up a bit I guess both in flavor and in texture and those are really nice in here as well but here I'm just using them raw um, and then the next thing we're going to add to this is some fresh avocado oh, of course mm -hmm. okay let me just put some pieces in here and I'll show them to you okay Looks like that. You see that? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, we are also going to put in a little bit of cilantro. I love cilantro. If cilantro tastes like soap to you, don't add it. Yeah, um, I'm, team, I'm team cilantro myself. So there same. will be lots of cilantro with mine. Yeah. And then the last thing you're going to add in there is some cheese. So for cheeses here, I'm a big fan of almost all kinds of cheese. Like there's the really soft blue cheeses that I don't like, but other than that, I love all cheeses. But what I found works really well in here is um, either queso fresco or feta, both because of how they crumble and because they almost have a light um, sourness mm -hmm. to them that uh, goes well, again, with the roasted, which, um, oh, I just see something, adobe peppers, okay. All right, and then I've just added the cheese on there. Can you guys see the cheese? Yep. <laughs> okay, and then the last bit, and I feel like I have to show you as I'm drizzling the sauce, because this is like always the money shot. Is it not, Christine? Oh, yes, it is. <laughs> Everyone <laughs> loves to see the sauce. Mm -hmm. It's okay. like like a runny egg. You got to see that part. Exactly, exactly. Okay, here's the sauce. 
Here's the taco. Mix it up and then. Nice okay. drizzle. Mm hmm. Oh, yeah. And that's it. There you go. That looks great. Roasted cauliflower tacos in a chipotle honey sauce. So, all right, I'm going to try it. It's like it's overstuffed as I thought it would be. Okay, let me try it. Nice, nice, nice and healthy. Perfect for Taco Tuesday or Meatless Monday. Mm-hmm. So, oh, yeah. Yeah. And, oh, my God. Like, and as you bite through it, the cauliflower is all the way at the bottom. So you're biting through, like, different just layers of texture. There's the crunch mm -hmm. of the onion. There's the softness and the sourness of the cheese. There's the... Um, that kind of kick you get from the sauce, but it's also a little bit sweet. And when you get to the bottom, you get to that kind of crispy, but a little bit creamy feeling cauliflower and the arugula at the very end to finish it off. Awesome. So it's excellent. I highly recommend you guys try it. Um, I am positive all of these toppings and the sauce would go excellent in a fish taco. Oh yeah. So if you're Fish tacos, um, what would I suggest for that? Um, any kind of fish, salt, pepper, olive oil, just kind of put it in the oven at 400 based on the fish for however long till I get it to the level of doneness you need. Um, for salmon, I'm still perfecting like what's the right amount of time to put salmon in. Do you feel like 400 for 12 minutes is too much? Um, I feel like asking my chef husband is going to give me a better answer than myself answering on this one. So okay. yeah. <laughs> I don't know, yeah, I, I myself, I have not really, yeah, my, me and cooking the fish, I usually defer right to him. Okay. okay, so yeah, I'm sure it would be great with that. Um, it would be great with shrimp. It would be great with paneer. If you don't want cauliflower, you could um, get paneer, roast that up, or... Um, even lightly saute it till some of the sides brown, put that in there. Uh, the sauce, this is like the, the thing that makes this dish is this sauce. So definitely try it. And you saw how easy this sauce was to put together and don't limit this sauce to tacos. You, you really don't yeah. have to, you can dip things in it. You know, you can dip like other roasted veg. If you're just making like a bunch of, um, roasted veg to put out on a platter. This would be a great sauce to go with that. This would be a great sauce for chicken wings. Um, so I do have a question. And if anyone mm -hmm. has any questions, either put them in the chat or we can ask them. But our first question is, um, can, you, can you boil the cauliflower first? You can. So um, the times when I use the boil first, roast later method is typically with potato. So with potato, what happens is like, I've been trying to perfect the perfect roasted potato. And I found the way to do that is to kind of boil it. But really I just do it in the microwave for however long until they become kind of tender. And then I season them and put them in the oven. So that way the insides are cooked through mm -hmm. um, and the outsides can get crispy. Whereas if you just put it in right away without boiling it first, by the time the inside cooks through, the outside is burnt. With cauliflower, I don't feel like it's as much of an issue. I can still get a nice crisp on the cauliflower. I don't feel like it's too raw inside or anything like that. Yeah, it might get like a little too mush too, especially mm -hmm. if you wanna get some nice caramelization on the outside of it, because that, mm -hmm. that inside's gonna keep cooking on it. And it's, yeah. it, even though it is a like heartier type vegetable and one that does is a little bit thicker to cook, yeah, it, it can go pretty, pretty quickly, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so definitely try this guy. Like, I'm not kidding. I'm 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 feeling sorry that I ate lunch so late because I just want to eat now. <laughs> All right. Does anyone have any other questions? No. I think we are all set then. So thank you so much, Saruthi. Christine. Yeah, I know a couple of you. 
provided me with emails to send you the recipe. So I will shoot that off to you. If you're not on your, your, our email list, you can always email me at taste at nl.edu to join the list and find out about things coming up. Next week, we're gonna have another Wine Wednesday coming up where we're continuing our tour of the Southern Hemisphere with Wines of New Zealand. We did discuss Wines of Australia last week and that is up on the YouTube and this will be up on the YouTube later tomorrow. So thank you everyone. Have a fantastic Tuesday night and we hope to see you again soon. All right, see you soon. Bye guys. Bye. Bye.